Yeah. Because as you age, you have to depend on other people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's countercultural to what we want yeah. to be in a lot of cases. It's I true. think that's what I, I think that's why other cultures do it better. Oh, um, yeah. In the process of, you know, what it means yeah. to take care of our family, you know, mm-hmm. in this. Because, you know, yeah. I'm just thinking about it in the process of, you know, different people, hmm. that, you know, with my mom, you know, mm-hmm. Chris's mom and what it's like, how hard it is for, you know, each, each family to take care of a family member, especially, you know, when you get to that very end stages where they're, you know, on very much childlike, infant-like type dynamic. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real thing, but yet there's gifts to be available there as well. So, yeah. Teaser. There you go. Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. (laughs) Worrying. Exactly. As long as you're not worrying. Not worrying. 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 Yes. That's all right. Yeah. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. How are you? I'm worrying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Your mind is turning. Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. not worrying, but That's right. yeah. That's, right. That's good. Yeah. It's always good to have something for your mind to chew on for a moment. I think sure. that, I think that's a little bit of what this podcast is. Just an opportunity to, that's right. yeah, an appetizer, if you will, just yeah. to kind of. Hopefully not a get your brain gets stuck kind of podcast, but more yeah. of a. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of your brain getting stuck. Yes, just like mine. Just out of curiosity, if you were to uh, think about it, and granted, that we're... Uh, think about my brain getting stuck. Yes. That's trippy. I was thinking about <laughs> your brain getting stuck. But uh, if you were to think about the ability, to, like longevity, mm-hmm. okay, how long would you want to live hmm. if you had you know the ability to nobody nobody's guaranteed tomorrow that kind of thing i mm-hmm. respect that but if you in your mind you know when you kind of picture longevity legacy that kind of thing do you have an age that kind of goes through your mind <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah uh well no uh well maybe <laughs> He's still worrying, folks. <laughs> this, if you could see my face, you'd see the loading spinner. I got gotcha, you. Yes. <laughs> um, um, I'm actually just started reading this book. Yeah. And it, your question ties right into kind of the introductory first chapter. Okay. And the book's called uh, Four Thousand Hours, I think. Okay. But the concept is so it's a time management book. Okay. And so far, you know, the premise, the first chapter, you kind of Mm -hmm. what it's about is flipping time management on its head kind of idea because so many time management books, and this ties into some of the conversations we've had, I want to say, but so many time management books are about maximizing your productivity and the output, the number of things that you can accomplish in the same finite amount of time. Okay. And so far this, this, again, I'm only in the intro part, but it's saying um we have such a finite amount of time why are we so worried about maximizing it to fit more stuff in Mm. and when we do that the other big part of this the intro is saying when we do that when you increase the amount of time you have you put more stuff in it Mm. right so it's like I'm extra productive, which means I can take on this other thing, which means now I have to be more productive. And so, you know, it's like I gotcha. You clear out your inbox, your email inbox, and it fills right back up, right? Sure. And I don't know. It's just like the, so far that's kind of the premise. But one of the things it talks about is medieval days. The concept of time wasn't nearly as crucial. You woke up with the sun and you mm-hmm. went to bed with the sun and you followed the natural cycles and when harvest came it was time time to do harvest stuff and mm-hmm. when the chickens hatched it was time to do chicken, you know, egg stuff. Yeah. Like you followed the seasons and cycles of nature versus 
sure. of these man-made hours. Yeah. And, um, and another part that I talked about tying back to your question, um, it's saying we care so much about the time we're spending because we only have a finite amount. If you had, you know, 10,000 years, okay, you could try everything. You wouldn't be so worried about, am I making the wrong choice with this mm. job choice or um, who I'm going to marry, right? It's like, yeah. well, they'll die out eventually or I will. Or, I don't know. Gotcha. But you get what I'm saying? Like the choices aren't as crucial because you have so much time to consider you sure. know, alternatives. And um, so it just made me, it's, I was kind of thinking about that already last night as I was reading that. Okay. Just this idea of like, man, yeah, if we had so much more time there'd be a, lot, a much more relaxed feeling, I think, in our life. Would there be? In this, I don't know. This is this kind of how I'm thinking about it. This idea of it's not all so finite. You know what I mean? No. And Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. So and I, you don't feel the urgency. I got to get this done because I got to get to that thing because I got to get uh-huh. to that thing. And I don't necessarily know that that's true, that it would relieve of, relieve yeah. us of that. but. I'm not I'm not buying that to be honest yeah. with you right off the bat cuz I think we just fill that 10,000 years the same way we fill, you know. Yeah. You know, in yeah. that process. I mean, granted it's a fun thought to think about, but and I and I think we have the ability to establish margin even now. Yes, I think I haven't read the book. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like this is going to be part of it, but but yeah, I agree. Keep going. Sorry. No, no. So I'm I'm still coming back to you. Did you have, in, in other words, if you can't do the 10,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> year option. Yeah. Um, I don't know because it depends on the vitality of the years, mm. right? So if you, like, let's say, you know, sure. 500 years you could live. So you no, I'm saying in a realistic human oh, spectrum. Yo, that's what we're doing. Okay. Yes, just in a... <laughs> 500 uh, years wasn't on the uh, option list, neither 10,000, yeah. but that's okay. Okay, up um, to 120? Yeah, Do I get that? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, well, my answer's the same. It depends on the vitality of those years. Okay. Like, I really don't care for the idea of living sickly and having mm. others have to, you know, yeah, take care of me in that sense. So if it was, you know, a good vi- vitality until I was 65, and yeah. then things are going downhill, well, 68 is good for me. I hear Does you. that make sense? So, so it's more about, yeah. So would you say in... And when some- I say vi- vitality, I don't necessarily mean being able to do all the same things. No. I just mean being able to use my mind in a way that, you know, that feels alive versus... Yeah. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't... Again, I'm not... I'm not aged to the point where I, I can understand or empathize with that, but... Sure. Um. So I would... Yeah, it'd be really interesting to hear from the perspective of people who are older and what that looks like for them. But yeah. And I think uh, in all honesty, that's just kind of what has prompted this for me. Cause I do tend to, you know, work with people, aging people, you know, and uh, who wrestle and laying anxiety or, you know, even dementia and, you know, and these kind of things. Plus, you know, I'll, I'd be lying if I'd say, you know, the passing of my mom and, you know, just routinely being in contact with my dad now more so as he's, you know, in this aging process is really kind of piqued my interest yeah. in this whole aspect. And I've, you know, not, I'm, I'm not saying I've researched it, but you know, this process of aging, I mean, I like the way you said, uh, aged, you know, because we're all aging, Mm-hmm. You know, in yes. in the re- the reality yeah. is we're all aging, so yeah. it's not like we get to a point, yeah. And oh my goodness, I'm really aging now. You know, yeah. look at this or look at that. That's an indicator of aging. Yeah, because it it was funny. I was well, I'll, I'll change the age to protect the innocent. But you know, I was working with a a a, a kid, and you know, and he was talking about his older sibling being three years older than him. Yeah. You know, and just that difference because his sibling is, you know, 
young teenager, adolescent. So, you know, muscle tone is developing, mm. you know, and it's like he's three years younger and it's just impossible, mm -hmm. you know, to compete when they were, you know, you know, yeah. similar at five and eight, maybe, or, you know, yeah. it was like competition was a little, but now there's, you know, his older brother is aged yeah. to this point where it's like muscle is just, you know, starting to. Yeah. Especially and, in those teenage years, three years makes a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Tremendous difference, yeah. you know, and, but so that's still aging, you know, part yeah. of that aging process, it was kind of fun to think about, but then, you know, as I was thinking about it, I'm, I'm hearing, Another part that I'm hearing is that part that you're kind of alluding to is that in some ways my vitality can be connected to my value. Hmm. And I was, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about that process, you know, is that, is that an Americanized, a Western world type thing, hmm. you know? Whereas I'm tending to lose my, you know, independence and becoming more dependent on other people. I can't do what I used to do for myself. So therefore, you know, my value mm. tends to diminish in that. Yeah. In, in this culture, I yeah. guess is, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And I definitely say that's yeah, a big part of my answer. Yeah. You know, in the back of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like once I stop bringing value, then just pull the cord. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm Which not sure that's I that understand it's very harsh. <laughs> Again, if you're on that other perspective, uh -huh. you know, and reaching that, you're listening and you are, you know, reaching that further end of age or whatever. And I, I would never mean that for someone else. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Cause yeah. quite often when I'm talking with individuals, it's like my, my value, I'm not valuable in this state yeah. or in this condition. And yet if we spin that around and to the point of saying, okay, if you had a friend that was experiencing what you're experiencing and going through what you're going through. And you knew that friend would that friend's value change, you know, for right. you. It's like, no, of course not. That's they're still my friend and I'd have more empathy for them. I'd have more compassion for them. And yet we have a difficult time flipping that back around and extending that same perspective to ourselves. Which, I think is also ties into that conversation about our current culture and productivity and yeah, you know, what brings value, right. Is I get stuff done or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely think culturally that shifted where, I don't know. I feel like in previous ages, mm. you know, uh, um, ages of years. Okay. <laughs> I can't think of the term. Uh, like previous the 1700s. generations. Yes, okay. thank you. Yes. Thank you. Wow, my brain is real, <laughs> real just slow today. Uh, I, I don't have any value, Mark. Just you do. Pull the plug. You do. I, I'm patient. <laughs> I'm happy to wait. Uh, yeah. So, like you know, previous generations. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good way to put it. Um, the I think the the mentality was so much different. Where every family member brought value in different ways it wasn't just about getting things done yeah and there's this honor in age right and sure. there's this connection with you know your your older because they you tend to all live in the same you know in a lot of cultures in the same yep. under the same roof right and so, some cultures still do yep yep which that's why i was kind of asking that aspect of the is it you know a you know, Western civilization, yeah. productivity yeah. mindset that has actually devalued yeah. aging, you yeah. know, or aged, I'd you know, say absolutely. Right. Well, as I, I hadn't I gone, I hadn't gone that far, yeah. you know, in the whole thing, but it, you know, it reminded it cause, um, it did go to, um, Proverbs, uh, what, 20, uh, 29, something where it talks about, you know, the, the, uh, splendor, of the young is their strength and yep. the splendor of the, you know, old is their gray hair or, mm -hmm. you know, men is their, you know, gray hair. And I, you know, to that point, you know, it's like, 
I don't know as if we're still looking at aging as a splendor. Yeah. You know, anymore. And, you know, I, I've, I've probably mentioned it before, you know, my, my whole Caleb type dynamic and Josh where he talk, you know, he talks about being as strong at 85, you know, and therefore yeah. he wants this hill country. He yeah. wants to, you know, mm. and I, and I, there's, there's definitely, you know, numbers of people, you know, who have taken on great works or the desire to have a great work you know, in their eighties. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, and so that's, that's kind of intrigued this mindset of, okay, what makes that difference? You know, of one person saying, yeah, doesn't matter. I'm still, I still want to do. And the other person, and I think where you're at, you know, some of it is that aspect of, you know, vitality, if you would. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think, man, yeah, I definitely think the value thing ties directly into my thoughts. Like, yeah, I just, and I, I don't think I'm alone. Right. I think you already described like even talking to, I hope you're not alone. I'm right here. Older, but (laughs) alone in my thinking (laughs) Okay, that as soon as I stop providing value, I don't want to burden anyone and you know i think that's a common maybe thought but i know that's for sure how i feel yeah whether i think that's right or not it's just that definitely how i feel like but would um, if i if i may i'm not trying to be rude or anything but you know no offense would, would you say that that perspective is a biblical perspective oh yeah i mean um no I'm not sure if it's anti-biblical either, but well, that's yeah. why. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is part of the. This is part of what we do on how <laughs> I see it. I think it's for me just a selfish perspective. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, because also, you know, my perception is that I'm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> just like if I'm not, if I'm just draining to others in that they need to help me and they need, you know, all these things that, uh-huh. um, as much as they love me, what they love was who I was, not necessarily. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, a little slippery there. What they yeah, love no, is yeah. who I was, yeah. like, but yeah, I'm still thinking about it. I think I'm here's, here's the continuum, you know, independence versus dependence. Yeah. If we, if I may, and I think there's a point where as we shift further from independence, we tend to think our value declines as we head towards dependence. Mm -hmm. And yet how many times have you heard of people who have said, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't buy the last three months, the last six years, the last two years, you know, that I had with my parent or whatever, because of the ability that I had to take care of them and spend time with them in a way that I never had before. Mm -hmm. You follow me? I do follow you. So it's like that I respect. And I think some of it is a a self versus others awareness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the individual while head while heading towards dependence they may tend to think of themselves as val devaluing whereas the individual the caretaker and i'm not saying in all cases i realize there are caretakers who you know get tired who get but they they might even sacrifice themselves even to a degree for the sake of of that caring for the other individual, which reflects the fact that the value has not decreased, but yet increased in some ways. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I realize it's a, a, di- a, a relational dynamic, mm-hmm. but I, that's the, you know, because I think, and here, here's my, here's the difference. I think in some ways it can tie into our comfort with vulnerability. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about, you know, granted, and I, and I, as I'm 
wrestling mm. with this myself. I think, you know, in some cases, the, the, is it it's like Proverbs 25, 22, where it talks about, um, yeah, all, all I can think of is splendor is God. Let's see. You want me to look at that? No. Okay. Uh, in other words, it's basically God is glorified in the hidden things, mm. but it it's the glory of God. There you go. To conceal a matter. Uh, okay. But the glory of Kings to search a matter out. Mm hmm. And I think, you know, and, this, and uh, not that I'm any king, but this has kind of been a searching out for me, a wrestling, if you will, because like you said, I believe, you know, it's God's glory that our life is so complex. Yeah. It's not that there's just one size fits all type dynamic. You follow me? Yeah. So I think that's God's glory that our life is so complex. There's, you know, different aspects, the vitality, you know, even is, you know, my mental health, my physical health, you know, my emotional health, my ability to, you know, do these different things. And, you know, what, what has an impact on that? I was, I was, I was talking with an individual the other day and uh, he was saying that social, social involvement you know, is the greatest, you know, predictor of long life, hmm. which, which I could agree with. But it was funny when I when I kind of wanted to fact check that, you know, I kind of typed in longevity, you know, and greatest predictor and mobility was another one. Like you're saying, you know, that vitality, um, the length, the the length of life that my parents, you know, my genetics, if you will. Mm hmm you know, factored into that, uh, hand strength was another, you uh, know, you know, to where, I guess I gotta start shaking your hand <laughs> harder. Than... <laughs> but yeah, there was just, you know, it was, you know, I would have loved to have been able to, you know, link one list, but it's, it's more complex than that. You know, yeah. it's like that research was saying, you know, mobility and flexibility because they were the exercise group. But yeah, exercise isn't necessarily always at the top of those lists. Yeah. But social, well, and definitely uh, social involvement versus isolation yeah. was definitely, you know, a predictor, you know, for longevity. You know, and granted, I'm not worshiping longevity, but I'm thinking about it in a context of aging. And, you know, and, and granted, I think, you know, I guess my my passion, if you will, in the topic is to be able to recognize, OK, yeah, I can't guarantee that we're going to all live to 85. But yet I believe there are things we can be doing now that might lead to a little more vitality or and I'm not saying that our vitality impacts our worth. Mm -hmm. That's that's the other wrestling that's kind of yeah. been behind this. It's like, no, you you still have, and granted, I'm not that person at this point, mm -hmm. but yet I've also seen, you know, and heard the, you know, the test, if you will, the testimonials from, you know, mm -hmm. people, caregivers yeah. for individuals and even, you know, people who are saying, you know, yeah, that was, you couldn't trade that time. Yeah. So at the risk of, uh. Uh, how do I put this? No risk. Just go ahead. Uh, how do you, like you answered the question? How, what's your comfort level with aging? What is the ideal age? Hmm. What does it look like? How do you feel about how comfortable are you with the idea of, you know, having, you know, let's a, a broken down body that can't do yep. things, so you depend on others, or a yep. broken down mind that can't quite, you yeah. know, yeah. Like how 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 do you feel about those things? What is your yeah your gut feeling to those things, and how do you does My, that make sense? Oh yeah, like, yeah. Be a little vulnerable with me. Oh, and, of course, <laughs> no sweat. That's why I'm saying there's no yeah. risk. Um, I am not a person that I mean it. I, I think it would be fun, you know, to be a, a uh, what is what's, what do you call a person that makes a uh, hundred years? There's octogenarian. Uh, right? yeah. 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 I think that would be kind of cool. Yes. But there again, it's that, do I still have basic 
fa- faculties to, you know, do that well, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's like, yeah, there's, there's so, th- but that's not my goal. I'll be honest. You know, it's like if, if I did, if I could, that'd be cool. But at the same time, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to make 90, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And it's funny cause as I'm thinking about that, you know, it's like, I'm also recognizing I'm not going to have the same ability. And, and I think that's where I, when I'm talking with people, they, they had, you know, the, the premise or the perspective that, yes, I'm going to maintain, you know, all the abilities that I had at 50 right on up through till the day I die, you know, that kind of thing. And that's not reality as far as I'm concerned. Or at least 60 or at least 70. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think, and I think when they hit those markers or when those other things come, you know, that's a, that's a, a difficult process. And I think, you know, our. So again, stop talking about them and talk about you. Is that difficult for you? It, and that that's that's what I'm actually wrestling with is is the ability to recognize no I'm okay mm-hmm. with the aging process mm-hmm. you know and granted I'm also doing that I'm also looking at that from you know my parents perspective yes. both both my mom died at yeah. 85 my dad's still 89 you know that kind of thing yep. to where that's my perspective yeah. on it and Chris's dad yeah. Away as well. Yeah, but he's you know so like he you say was pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's the ben- benefit, right, to right. being around situations like that is it gives you a, a better perspective on it. Well, it gives me a perspective. I don't know whether it's better. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, well, I, I better, may be more comfortable. More present. Yeah, comfortable. I yeah. may be more comfortable with that aging process in the fact that yeah, you know. I recognize, and and here again, I think, I think I, I'm bringing it back to myself. I have also wrestled with the fact that you know when I had, you knew I had those blood clots, mm-hmm. like you know, and it's like I think for me that was a that was a a a turning point. It's like you know nobody's guaranteed tomorrow, and I think I had bought into the lie, if you will, that if I do this, this, and this, and this, I can live to be a hundred. You follow me? Mm-hmm. And it was like I was doing those things, and yeah, not to be more, but but I, you know, if if things hadn't gone as well as they did, I could have died. Yeah. It, you know, at that point, yeah. it's just a fact. Yep. So, you know, I think for me, that was a, that was a turning point because I was able to recognize in some ways, okay, yeah, nobody's guaranteed tomorrow, period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have, Mm -hmm. you know, each day is a gift. And so therefore, you know, and, and yet it's funny as I was thinking about that gift, you know, how many times. And I think, you know, faith factors into some of these issues, you know, that kind of thing. Do yeah. sense of purpose, yes. you know, as and I think that's a difficult yeah. thing. I'm not I'm saying for myself, yeah. it would be difficult, Me too. you know, to recognize a sense of purpose if I don't have all my mental facilities type mm-hmm. thing, because I was thinking about it. You know, I think that is part of the. Um, splendor of is that is that wisdom dynamic yeah. that older people have, yeah. and I think unfortunately, you know, as a culture, we've tended to devalue that that wisdom yes. because yeah. so often it's connected with um, being out of touch. Be, yes, yes, being out of touch, or you know, just being stuck, mm-hmm. old fashioned. Mm-hmm. You know, when in reality, some of that's just plain out wisdom that we could still right. benefit from today. Yep. And yeah, they could th- probably tell us why some of the fences were built, you know, <laughs> exactly. Chester King's fence. yes, exactly. Yeah. And to be able to say, you know what, that's probably not such a good idea because people did that back in the 20s, mm-hmm. you know, in this cyclical type, 
you know, governmental type thing. You know, it's like they've seen some things Mm -hmm. that we can learn from and say, you know what? No need to reinvent that wheel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It got, you know, socialism type dynamics, you know, and and granted there's the, you know, the upgraded socialism of our culture today, but you know, it is, it is kind of interesting to think about how in a lot of cases, you know, if a person, and I, and I think it can be, you know, on both ends of the spectrum, you know, you talk with a parent of a, of a down syndrome, it's like that child has no less value. You know, but yet culturally we can say, well, no, in the womb, you know, this child's going to have these issues and we can Hmm. dispose of it at this point. And I think we have that same disposable perspective in some cases, you know, as people age. And Hmm. I just wrestle with that. Yeah, I think that I think that's awesome. And I think, yeah, I think if anything, it. Yeah, you've. Uh, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> you've pulled me into the wrestle, right? To, okay. To kind of think, be thinking about it, and I can definitely tell you, I haven't been wrestling this, so like, mm. it's kind of a new concept to me to even think about or, or wrestle with it. And I can tell you, I don't like the idea of <laughs> aging. Like, this is my initial yeah. wrestling. Is just like, please no. Um, but you mentioned uh, kind of having the mental you know, faculties uh-huh. diminish is kind of the thing that's less appealing to you. I'd almost rather not know that I don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then have the mental faculties, but the inability to do something about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I may, a clarification, you would, you would wrestle with having all your mental faculties and then losing your physical ability to right. implement. Right. I think so. Gotcha. That's right now what feels pain, the most painful thinking about it, right? This idea that, and not only is my mental faculties there in the desire to do things and, and the knowledge to do things, but I can't physically do them. But I'm also, because my mental faculties are there, I know the drain mm. that I am to others, right? Mm-hmm. Where like, I guess I wouldn't mind being a little bit <laughs> senile <laughs> because that was, I, I hope, relieve some of that burden and i think that's the thing that i'm probably the most afraid of for you though in aging yes is being a burden i got you and knowing it i hear you so that's the wrestling that i'll have to do you know as i age and just recognizing that being a burden isn't always (laughs) you know kind of like what you're saying that doesn't diminish value yeah but it certainly feels that way right because yeah i think that's kind of how our culture you know, it treats each other and it kind of how we think culturally is like my values based on what I do. Yeah. My output, my productivity, and the more productive, the more valuable you are. And that's why we listen to people who get a lot of stuff done. And that's why we don't listen to people who don't. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like our culture is very much bent towards that. And so for me, it's very difficult to conceive of, or, you know, concede to being a burden and not bringing being productive like output not being yeah does that make sense yeah and it, and that's the question i guess in some ways have have we in some ways made productivity a god oh yeah okay absolutely you yeah. know yeah to, i definitely think so yeah, yeah. it's an idol if you will yeah i mean i'm very much again my brain's kind of tipped towards that because of this book i'm reading and just sure it's, it's very much saying the same thing again i don't know i haven't finished the book but yeah yeah that's kind of the premise it's setting up and it's like yeah it's it's pretty true like so much about our culture is about how to maximize how much we can do yeah you know yeah and can like, you think of a older person that you would i mean want to live like I, you know I, I think that's part of my struggle too um because of the way our family is mm-hmm. i can't really latch on to some family members and i'm like that would be okay to be like that oh really yes yeah, so i think that because i was thinking about that a little bit sure. earlier it's just like i don't really have that and so what i think about for my kids is just i don't want that for them you know because yeah. i can't picture and my parents aren't quite old enough for that either. Okay. And 
Um, this again. Uh, that's also a wrestling too. Is like I don't how unselfish can I be? Like yeah. I'm almost I'm honestly that brings anxiety. This idea of having to take care of my parents mm, because I, I don't know if I I'm that caretaker, right? Like I got gotcha. or, or how good I'll be at that. I'm I'm not gonna say I won't do it or whatever. I'm just saying right. like so that's part of the the picture too. Just like I don't want my yeah. kids to have to wrestle that but i obviously don't have that choice necessarily so yeah. i'm not i'm not saying that but if i did you yeah. know i would definitely choose to live right up until i couldn't be you know of value and then <laughs> I, and and granted i think there are end of life issues mm-hmm. you know i think you know there is a i guess in some ways when i think of modern medicine i think you know pri previous generations that end of life transition if you will you know there weren't as many options we couldn't you know keep people alive or they couldn't keep people alive back then to the degree that we can now based on technology so i'm 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 gonna recognize that as a separate issue you know well it's tied it's it's part of the complexity yeah you know of you know that ability that we have to basically choose not choose when we end our lives but to a degree choose how much um support we do you know and i and i think about that when i think about support it it does some ways come back to the you know the social you know, connections that people have, because I think we can tend to underestimate how important that is. And I think, you know, that was something that I was able to see, you know, in my father-in-law and, you know, and, you know, my mom and that kind of thing, how we, we live in North Carolina. Yeah. And I think it's another thing um, between you and me, that 15 years, give or take in age makes a big difference. Yeah, for sure. You know, as far as, cycle of life type things what's your our difference in experience at Mm -hmm. that point but i was thinking about it in the context of how you know we live chris and i live in north carolina our parents new york and pennsylvania so we weren't necessarily able you know to you know be but i was so thankful in that process that really the communities you know were uh, so much of the support and uh, not Excuse me, I apologize because, you know, with with Chris's dad, you know, she her siblings were in that area, that kind of thing. They were tremendous support. But, you know, there were also external supports, you know, that came in to, you know, help watch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at times and I've definitely noticed Mm -hmm. it, you know, more with my parents because my brother's in Pennsylvania, but still four hours away. And, you know, it's the people it's the people that still plow out their driveway, you know, in the wintertime and, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, my dad, you know, is basically saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gaining some weight here after your mom might be the way he's eating a little bit, but no, he's still eating pretty healthy, but you know, he's still eating food that people have dropped off from, you know, the funeral. And that's been, you know, and beginning of end of August, you know? Mm. So, you know, that kind of thing, those, those supports. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a tremendous blessing, you know, when we think about that difference of longevity between, you know, socially engaged and involvement, you know, and versus the isolation. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that can tie in to when we don't see ourselves as valuable, you know, we tend to pull back, you know, and head more towards isolation you know, because we can't be as independent as we are and, you know, or as we were. Yeah. I love the stories that I heard about your mom. Mm. Just, you know, if, if I, if I'm going to get old, I want to get old like your mom. (laughs) Is that fair? (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. uh, Yeah. And she didn't seem to intentionally isolate. Like, and I, I don't know. I just, a lot of things you said, you know, people would kind of be lying to her at church to sure connect with her and just stuff like that. And I think that would definitely be a desire of mine as I age is to be involved in engaged in community and have that value sure. that it's that without a doubt was yeah. obvious with your mom. Right. Yeah. And I think 
so when I t- think about the value, uh, again, this is all, yeah. this is why I'm so slow. <laughs> it's like I'm just thinking it all out. I would say I've given this less thought than just about anything else we've t- talked about, which is uh, uh, In all maybe fairness, like but, you say, it was, uh, you know, something that, you know, we had kind of sprung on you a little bit. We, well, you we, know, had yeah. it as a topic, but yeah. it wasn't something that, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, though, things I've thought a lot more about. And this one, I would just say it's, Hmm. I think I avoid thinking about this honestly. That's fair because I think it does. It brings anxiety to me to me to this idea of being a drain on society, yeah. specifically my family. But but I I back. like I like the fact not that you're feeling anxious, but I I like the fact that you're able to express that mm-hmm. because it's like okay you know how what do we need that what do we need to do in yeah. some ways to reverse yeah. as people are aging that this fear mm-hmm. dynamic and granted you know my ability to have children, you know, if I did or didn't have children, you know, who's going to take care of me and what, you know, I respect that's all out there, but at the same time, I, I, I guess, like I say, it's just a passion for me that people Mm. don't necessarily connect that value with vitality. Yeah. But well, and I think vitality too, I think, I think it's also important to define that. Agreed. And because, that's where, yeah. yeah, I was thinking like you were sharing with my mom, she yeah. had all of her mental facilities. She may not have been able to do it physically, mm-hmm. but it was that mental capacity mm-hmm. that was there, you know, to be able to connect and engage and mm-hmm. that kind of thing in such yeah. a way that made it, you know, possible. And I, and, you know, I think, you know, um, with Chris's dad, you know, he still had, you know, much of his mental yeah. capabilities you know and you know it was his physical body that was you know giving out in the process of the cancer type stuff so it was a different yeah. you know yeah yeah i think again just going back to her mom it sounds like she was very engaged with others and mm-hmm. very considerate of others so mm. she didn't really again this is all based on your story <laughs> so you you could have coded this <laughs> but uh just I get this perception that she wasn't trying to draw everyone into her life. She was trying to connect in theirs. Sure. You know, and yeah. And so the value, you know, but then as a result, people also cared about her and it, exactly. but it, that wasn't her goal and that wasn't her desire. And I think for me, as I wrestled with this in the moment, like mm-hmm. I, I think I want to be of that mind to be about still being engaged with others and, and trying to, like ask them questions about their life and kind of you know, ooh, I just whacked my mic. <laughs> See, you're getting compassionate. You're getting passionate, passionate about yeah. this now. You're starting to talk with your hands. That's right. Uh, but yeah, being able to connect with others and and hmm. I don't want to say bring value in that way, but bring value even to my own life to serve others and sure and to feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think and but again, if the mental facilities declined to where I can't really do that Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. maybe it's okay because I won't realize it I hear you and that's you know Mm -hmm. but if I can't do stuff with my hands Mm. at least like someone wheel me to the the church or whatever Mm -hmm. so I can yeah ask you know how how that kids doing or whatever yeah you know what i mean like yeah to Good me to that's you. kind of yeah and remember the person's name yeah. hopefully yeah exactly yeah. yeah exactly which again it's 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 interesting to perceive like you know the beginning with the end of mind kind of fast forwarding uh-huh. the end and thinking about it um when i think about it through the lens of your mom and the stories you've told it's like that feels more palatable mm. but i don't necessarily see anything like that in my culture okay. where i live I got where you. we are, you know, I hear you. Like, think about our church. I, I don't think of someone mm. older in that kind of state mm. where people kind of make a beeline to that person. You know what I mean? Sure. And so it's just kind of hard for me to picture it. I got gotcha. I definitely don't think it's impossible. I'm just saying that. I think that's part of what makes it uh, harder to wrestle with. It's just like, how do I fit in mm. the culture that I'm in right now? When I'm no longer who I am, you know, like yeah. at this age. Who I and, am right now. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just think that's not something to even worry about, right? No, like I and, think. 
And I think it's interesting when we think about the aging process, you know, it's like who I am right now. Well, all Will the- you take care of me when, I, when I'm <laughs> decrepit and you're a hundred and an octogenarian? <laughs> I will see what I can do, Justin. Okay. I will so see sure. what I can I do. Because I think you're going to be more. <laughs> all right. you're, you're, it's I, I, on record, I, folks. <laughs> if he's not taking care of me in my decrepit I will, state. I will say part of the aging process for me, the probably the one of the bigger factors I've noticed is my eyesight. Okay. So like you say, I can't guarantee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you're 100, they can probably replace your eyeballs. So it's okay. <laughs> but like you say, I'll do I'll do my best to keep your beard, you know, as 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 coiffed as you keep it, you know. It's like I, I, your hairstyles are pretty high maintenance for a man that can't uh, see well. <laughs> yeah, you can just tell me it looks good. Now. That's what I mean. I won't really know cuz I'll be in that state. So, no, like you say, yeah, as long as as long as Megan can still do your hair for you, we're we're good shape. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Well, I honestly hope I outlive her so she doesn't have to deal with me in that state. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, that was another, yeah. that was another thing, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, Chris and I had that little, uh, couples type contract mm. early on that, you know, I had agreed, you know, in some ways to pass away after her, Yeah, you know, that, yeah. you know, and I think other couples do that, but when, yeah. but when the, uh, when I got the, the PE there, you know, it was like, PE. uh, pulmonary embolism, oh, blood, right, blood right, clot, right, right. sorry. But you know, when when I had that issue, it's like, okay, I, I can't, can't I can't, it. I can't yeah. guarantee, you know. And yeah. it really was kind of a, you know, I and maybe that's a part of what has, you know, in combination with you know my mom and Ernie, you know, and my dad and you know Linda's, you know, surviving, you know, partners for you know spouses. It just makes me think about that as far as you know, you know what the the next years look like, you know. Yeah. And it's just, and I, and I think that's the, the difficult part for me. Cause you, you were talking about even our church, but you know, like Ray Moore mm-hmm. would be somebody, you know, mm-hmm. that yeah. you, you just routinely, yeah, you know, aging person who you just routinely look forward to seeing. Yeah. And, you know, when they walk into a room, it's like, you know, people make the effort because granted he's made the effort, yeah. you know, in that case, you know, because he'll, you know, routinely ask about the kids, you know, mm-hmm. when we see him and that kind of thing. So just kind of thinking about that, you know, that there, mm-hmm. and the other thing I was thinking based on what you want to, you know, maintain what you have right now in comparison to other people that you are surrounded by, you know, and I think as we age, it's like you would, you're okay with where you're at right now. And granted, as long as the majority of the people stay around you, that are around you, you know, another 10 years, it might still be very similar. Mm -hmm. You follow me? No. Well, Uh, but I'm trying. Yeah, it's okay. I'm with you. In other words, picture picture yourself at my age. Yeah. Okay. Your lifestyle probably isn't going to change a whole lot more, Mm -hmm. even though you may be thinking it will, you know, you want to maintain what you have right now. I don't, I don't, that's what I I thought I heard. No, I think I'm okay with getting into 60s, 70s. Like, I think I'm okay with the kind of the declining abilities, but. At okay. a reasonable amount, you know, like I, I, I'm not afraid of that really. Okay. It's really about the cliff that I, that brings uh, me the nervousness is like, yeah, yeah, I have a stroke and now like, mm, you know, I need assistance with things and, yeah. you know, or mentally it's like, I, what day is it? You know, like, I don't know. Like there's some of those, yep. that cliff is what makes me nervous. Um, I think if it's a slow decline. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's what I've been dealing with for the last 10 years. Right. So it's like, (laughs) sure. And and I think obviously the pace of that increases the older you get. But I'm just saying, I think, I don't think that's what really makes me nervous as much as, well, yesterday, you know, he was a stalwart in our community. Mm -hmm. And today we now have to take care of him. You know, and maybe it's a day, maybe it's over the course of a year, quick decline, whatever that, but I'm saying that kind of that cliff nature is sure really the thing that, that I kind of wrestle with that anxiety, but yeah. Yeah. I I think 
for me, ultimately, though, you mentioned this earlier, it's about faith, right? It's about, mm, faith you know, is I, definitely you, a factor. You, you don't control this. Mm-hmm. I don't control nope. this. Nope. You know, I know, I think if I had imagined in your mind's eye, you know, you're this <laughs> this guy out in the garage doing, you know, tinkering, doing things, even when you got, you know, you're bent over and can barely stand straight, but you're still out there nailing some wood or whatever. like Tinkering. Yeah, tinkering, exactly. I, I think that's kind of your perception. My perception is hopefully something like that too. You I hear know, you. But it's like, we don't have any control over that exactly. vision. Exactly. Or becoming reality. Yep. I also... I'm also not belittling, belittling that vision, I think, began with the end in mind. I think there's something mm-hmm. to be said about, I'm going to live to be tinkering in my garage till I'm 100. Mm-hmm. I think there's something about that idea that can keep you vital, vit- keep your vitality to a degree. But mm-hmm. back to what I was saying, we don't have any control. Agreed. And, I think, and I'm not saying, yeah. yeah, we do. I just, and I think if anything, I want to recognize what we do that conveys value to yeah. the aging, you know, in that process yeah. of so often, I think it's difficult to maintain that, mm. you know, that perspective of having value yeah. when I am no longer, yeah. you know, vi- you know, when I, when I am no longer productive, yeah. I want to separate vital from productive, yeah. you know, because I believe everybody is vital, Yeah, but even when they're not productive seemingly output. productive yes from an output yeah. standpoint yeah another recent example that's very real for me would be gene oh good, sure good friend of ours yep. who was very involved with us at cr and yeah he and i had um, tons of awesome conversations mm-hmm. and kind of were accountability partners to a degree and stuff like that and as a result i got to know him and his life really well and got to learn a ton from him it was just sure really just I really value that relationship and I always will yeah and um you know he played music he played the fiddle Mm -hmm. and he would play with us at CR and yeah I mean those are my favorite memories playing music by far is being up there on stage with him you know him playing the fiddle or the steel guitar that he he killed the steel guitar too yeah for a minute there and then there was a cliff where he just Mm-hmm. couldn't play fiddle like that anymore and mm-hmm. he would stumble through it and he'd have to get help up on the stage and help back off and mm-hmm. and I saw that kill him you know what mm-hmm. I mean I saw that like inability to do, do the things he loved just mentally break him down mm-hmm. um and I I think you know he basically said that's it I'm done you know yeah. and it was within a year or two years or whatever that mm-hmm. he passed away and that's one of the closer examples I have of dying from old age, basically, right? Because sure. I've, I've had people die in my life that were, you know, older, but typically it was a sickness or, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like we said, um, mm-hmm. I think with Ernie where the cancer, it's, it's like there's a villain there and you can kind of chalk it up to that and that sure. feels a little bit different than just kind of old age. Decline. You know, d- decline, yeah. Sure. Um, and... I I look at what he went through and I was like I don't want that either. I know he mm-hmm. didn't want it, you know, mm-hmm. and he was like, "This is taking too long to die. What's going on?" You mm-hmm. know, like get me out of here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think very much as a man who had such a rich life, mm-hmm. such a rich life, when it's when he's again that ability to output stopped, he just mm-hmm. wanted out. And I think that's definitely, I relate to that and I feel sure. like that's how I feel about it. And yet, um, you know, again, we don't control that. And yeah. do you think, I, I'm just asking a philosophical question. Yeah. Do you, do you think there is, if, when we think about a loving God, like we talk about, do you think there is, you know, he takes that into consideration in that part. I think so. I hear you. I, I mean, I, 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 yes, I believe so. But okay. I also know that he does things we don't want all the time. I get it. Right. So there's this things balance, that causes right? growth. And I, yeah, and I yeah. think, I think yep. sometimes, you know, when we think about the fruits of the spirit, you know, all that, you know, I, I think that process can also mm-hmm. increase our patience. Yeah our ability to say, okay, God, you know, and, and there again, faith is a part of that, yes. 
you know, yeah. that process. And I can understand, you know, people who don't have a faith, you know, will definitely wrestle more with, with anxiety in that process of yeah. what comes next type thing. And I feel for people like that. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I have, you know, compassion for them. And, you know, that's where I want to, I guess that's another part of that desire that I have to convey. No, your life has purpose and it does have value. And you're still here because mm -hmm. maybe you need to understand a little more of mm -hmm. what, you know, the purpose is for your life to be able yeah. to have relationship with Jesus Christ in that process. And, it's from my perspective, it's to your benefit that yes. you're still here. Yeah. If you're yeah. not, yeah. if you're not ready, you know, if yeah. you don't have relationship with Jesus Christ yeah. to, you know, spend eternity, mm -hmm. you know, with him, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And I think that definitely, that's part of the, the conversation as well, certainly, because sure. as believers, it's like, as soon as my life here is mm. not mm -hmm. such that I feel good. Yeah, take me to the next one because it's way better. I get you. you know, it's like yeah. so that's part of it too. But, but yeah, again, just all of this kind of for me comes back to faith, and and I don't have control. And mm -hmm. you know, if I end up being the the sick person that has to be taken care of, basically the scenario I don't want, mm -hmm. I still trust God in that. I still I trust you. he has a purpose in it, that my mm. kids are meant to learn something from that, that the caretakers involved, like that there's yep. purpose in it. Sure. I know that's true. I hear you. I, I 100% have faith that that's what he's meant for me, if that's how it's supposed to go. That doesn't mean that's what I want. I want the opposite, exactly. right? Like I want exactly. to be vital and then dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want yeah like a good clean car crash right when i hit 85 would be good <laughs> be careful what you ask for uh, you know but no i hear where you're coming from <laughs> or you yeah. know fall asleep and then you don't wake up i mean that's, yeah that's, I that's always the, yeah. the dream no i get you yeah uh yeah and yeah but again yeah i can say after wrestling for one hour that I'm okay with whatever it's going to be, you know, I've surrendered it. Right. Like, and okay. I think that's, you know, but it'll be an ongoing wrestling as I do age and as it becomes more real. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, ultimately I'm okay with however it goes. Cause I know it's part of his plan. Sure. And if that's, again, if my kids go through the hardest time taking care of me, it's probably mm -hmm. good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Based on who they are right now, I can say they can learn to serve a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah, as far I'm saying, that's fair as far as you're being their father and casting yeah, yeah, casting yeah, down yeah, that view. But yeah. yeah, yeah, no. So yeah, know that your uh, know that your life has value even as you uh, lose productivity, Justin. Right. In that, and so we'll we'll have to do an update. I will have to catch an update on your book. That you're yeah, reading to see, 4, see yeah. where it goes. Yeah, yeah see where yeah. it goes. Hopefully, it's so good that I can't help but make you do an episode on it. So. Well, I'm I'm willing yeah, to yeah. I'm willing to be a part of it, yeah. but yeah. So yeah. I I appreciate just know that uh, I appreciate your wrestling this morning in that in that process and yeah. But I appreciate yours the wrestling you've done to kind of bring into this conversation. Well. It's, Good stuff. And for all, and granted, I, I don't think our uh, our listenership is uh, that aged according That's to right. our, uh, but yeah, doing yeah. doing what you can to think about the plan for the end with the beginning, plan for the, the from the beginning mind. with the end yeah. in mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. think about it in that process of, okay, yeah. how am I yeah. planning for my future? Not that God isn't in control of it, but yeah. What kind of old person do you want to be and how can you... How can you work towards that right now? You know, uh, for me, it's relational. So I do. And I do think it's on. I think it's uh, it's fair that, you know, people tend to age as I interact with people. You know, I think there are tend to be two groups, you know, those people who are less fearful and therefore are more engaged. And those who are more fearful and kind of tend to be more cantankerous if you will um hmm. you know because i i think it does come back to viewpoint in hmm. some ways as far as you know if it's mine to control 
you know, and I can't control what my body is doing and the way it's falling apart, you know, that's a difficult process. Mm -hmm. But if we can basically say, okay, you know, there's a purpose in it, Mm. even, even in, you know, the circumstances, Mm. you know, I think that frees us up to be able to say, okay, you know, this is, this is, this is my body for God to use, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And, 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 um, here again, I probably, I don't know whether you and I have shared it, but, um, over the mic, but, you know, as I was thinking about that, as, um, it came to mind as I prayed, you know, over my mom's grave, mm. you know, cause I realize it, the internment, if you will. I realized, you know, we were putting her physical body in the ground. Mm. You know, she was no longer there. Mm-hmm. But I was able in that moment to recognize how God had gifted her with that physical body in such a way that she used it. And well, God used it in her life to make her who she was, you know, in her spirit as mm-hmm. as as mm-hmm. her spirit. You know what I'm saying to where, and so, so in Mm. some ways that's my view of, uh, you know, our uh, limitations to where, you know, I think we see limitations as being wrong, bad, but yet, you know, so often it is the limitations that make us into something better. Who you are. Yeah. Who we are. And I think, you know, yeah, my, so in that my process is to be a, my desire would be to be able to be a joy filled person, Mm -hmm. you know, even as I experience the limitations that come with the aging process. Yeah. That's, that's my, and I, and so therefore, you know, do I get frustrated when I, (laughs) <laughs> Do I get frustrated when I bang my head against the other side of a closet because I can't get my eyes far enough away from something to see it like I used to? Sure, I do. But, you know, it's like, OK, Mark, you got to go. You got to get a stronger light. You got to get your readers on. You got to do something. And I still get frustrated with that when mm-hmm. I can't do what I yeah. once did. Yeah. But yet I've also come to the realization mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm not as strong physically as I once was, but you know, it's like, okay, there's no use blowing your back out again, just to think you're still as strong as you were, you know? So yeah, I wrestle with those things. Don't get me wrong in that aging process, but I'm also able to say, okay, God, how are you, how are you developing the fruits of the spirit in my life based on this, Mm -hmm. you know? And it does come back to, okay, I got to ask, I got to ask somebody for help. You know, Mm -hmm. I got, I got, I got to ask one of those strong young men who's, Mm -hmm. you know, splendor is John, you know, or Lizzie, Mm -hmm. you know, that, or, you know, at times Chris, I'll quite often rely on Chris. It's like, okay, you know, she's right there. What does that say? Mm -hmm. You know, cause I can't see it anymore, Mm -hmm. you know, to the degree that I once did, Mm -hmm. you know, but I am learning in that way to depend on, you know, Chris and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, Hey John, okay. I'm not asking you to blow your back out either, but you know, between the two of us, you know, I can mm-hmm. contribute my 25% and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, it is, it is a, and it, and I will say at this point, I think I've, I've learned, I'm learning to value. I know you kind of refer to me as the lone wolf person, but I'm, I think in some ways I am processing that the yeah. value of that in that process of, yeah, I can, but is, is it now a greater strength of mine to be able to unify some people and say, Hey, can I have a hand? Can we do this? You know, cause there's a lot to be said for that as well. Yeah. So like I say, I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of Kings to search it out. That's to, right. Yeah. You're doing it. Oh, well, I'm working on it. I can't see Dragging me well. along for the ride. <laughs> Does that make sense in the process of things? It does. Yeah. I had a vivid and hilarious and uh, begin with the end in mind mind vision. Yeah. I'll share before. Yeah. We drop. Yeah. (laughs) I just had this idea of like being very involved relationally and yet not having all my 
uh, facilities, <laughs> and I just envision accidentally peeing myself. <laughs> And I want to be the guy who makes hilarious jokes about that. And everyone in the room to remember that and like hold on to that for when they're old. Does sure. that make sense? Like yeah. that's the kind of old I want to be. Yes. You know? That you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. And like this is part of the deal. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Yeah. I want, I'm going to work on my jokes for that. You, you've, you've just relieved some of your own anxiety right, about that right. process. That's part of the wrestling. Yeah. That's my end of life vision. It's, nice. Know, <laughs> relieving myself. Nice publicly, job. Accidentally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, leave them yep. with a good joke as I yep. exit or as, as I'm wheeled out by the, someone else. There you go. <laughs> Justin will be saying something about that sock was getting a little too dry. <laughs> I'll have to look that joke up. <laughs> wow, no, that's off the cuff. So like I said, you won't find it out there. But yeah, I can respect uh, your sense of humor in that yeah. process. Yeah. So yeah. That's well, thanks for it. Thanks for sharing, Justin. Yeah, thank you. Thanks no problem. Bringing it up. That's how we see it. Hey, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.